I'm never gonna financially recover from this. Why do they keep doing this? Well, folks, it's official. MacBooks have ray tracing now. Did not think that I would be saying that, especially given that we just got new Apple Silicon MacBooks back in January. Not, but 10 months ago, but we're already at the M3 generation and not just the M3, but the Pro and the Max. We have a completely revamped structure for the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, including completely getting rid of the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now the 14 inch starts with the regular M3 chip. There's a whole bunch of stuff that Apple didn't talk about, including increasing and decreasing the price in some cases, depending on configuration in the US, differences in RAM, differences in cores. The lineup is a little bit hairy right now. So today I'd like to go through what Apple announced and show you guys some of the stuff that they didn't talk about all that much. Right after this word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Basis. Their new Blade HD laptop power bank is the ultimate tool for charging all of your devices. And I really mean all. With 100 watts of power delivery, you can even fast charge a 14 inch MacBook Pro. The Blade HD is just 0.7 inches thick, but it packs a punch. With dual USB-C, they can individually deliver 100 watts of power, and dual USB Type-A, they can individually deliver 30 watts of power. Plus, there's a smart digital display on the front which shows the battery percentage, the charging power delivery, and the time to charge your devices. I brought the Blade HD to New Zealand and Australia last month for the iPhone launch, and it was an absolute game changer. I could keep my 16-inch MacBook Pro and my iPhone charged well on the go for these long 15-hour workdays or overnight plane trips. This thing is an absolute legend, so if you want to learn more, check out the link in the description below and use code LUKE for 20% off. Big thanks to Basis for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the video. All right, so let's jump into it. There's a lot to unpack here. And the first thing that I wanna talk about kind of went under the radar at the beginning of the event, and it's the new dynamic caching feature that Apple is introducing. Basically, traditional GPUs allocated memory based on the highest amount of memory usage, even though that fluctuates. But with dynamic caching, it allows the memory to swap a little bit more fluidly. At least that's my understanding of it. I'm definitely curious to see how that plays out, especially with the optimizations of unified memory. But the big feature, of course, is ray tracing, which is coming to a whole wide lineup of Macs, including the new iMac that got the M3 chip as well. But even if you don't care about ray tracing specifically or the games that it will hopefully enable, you should care about graphs like this. Apple claims that the M3 family is up to 1.8 times faster than the M2 family. Now, this is odd because they just said family, which means I assume they're comparing the M3 Max with the fully loaded 40 core GPU, because I can't imagine that the 10 core GPU in the M3 is 1.8 times faster than the 10 core GPU in the M2. So once again, Apple loves these vague, unlabeled graphs, and we all just kind of have to guess. And in a similar vein, let's talk about the CPU. This, I think, has the potential to be very, very interesting because it seems like there might be more going on under the hood than Apple is revealing. Because this graph here compares M3 family performance cores to the M2 and the M1. And this is actually a much more useful graph because those performance cores are consistent across the range. So you're gonna get different amounts of them in an M3 and an M3 Max, but they're the same cores. And you can see those cores in action when you look at yet another unlabeled vague graph that shows the M3 dramatically outperforming the M1. In fact, with the M1 at 100%, it looks like we're somewhere at 140% for the M3, that's a pretty big difference in performance, although granted that is over two generations. And you'll notice we're also consuming a little bit more power, but you can really see the difference with that ray trace GPU. Take a look at this graph. Apple is claiming 170% performance over the M1. Now Apple didn't grace us with any unlabeled graphs for the M3 Pro and Max. And that, that might be for a good reason, because take a look at the spec sheet for the M3 Pro. Couple things to note, first of all, we have one fewer GPU core than we did previously. And we also have an actual decrease in the amount of performance cores. It used to be eight performance, four efficiency. Now we're getting six performance, six efficiency. 
so I'm not surprised that Apple neglected to include a performance comparison to the M2 Pro. They did for the GPU though, and that's interesting because we have one less GPU core, but still 10% more GPU performance. Still overall, the M3 Pro compared to the M2 Pro doesn't seem like a very big jump. The M3 Max, on the other hand, well, that seems a little more interesting. This is the first time that Apple has released a Pro and a Max chip that don't have the same CPU. We're getting 12 performance cores, that's double the M3 Pro, and as such, they're saying 50% faster CPU than the M2 Max, 80% compared to M1 Max. That is astonishing. The GPU though, not as big a jump. We're only getting 20% over the M2 Max. Granted, we are only gaining two GPU cores, plus of course, all that ray tracing stuff. So it's a very weird situation that we're in right now. And it doesn't get any less weird when you look at the configurations for these new machines. I'm warning you right now, it's weird. Let's get into it. We're gonna start at the bottom of the lineup here, the new M3 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now there is a new color space black that's only available on the M3 Pro and Max. We're still stuck with space gray and silver on the base MacBook Pro. Now, this thing gets interesting because it is replacing the old 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro. Now remember, that thing started at $1299, the new machine starts at $1599, so that's an increase of $300. However, you are getting twice the storage, $512 instead of $256. So if you play Apple's weird little math game, that was a $200 upgrade, which means that technically you could make the case that this new base model is only $100 spec for spec, more than the outgoing model. And even if you don't buy that argument, I still think this is a good value because compared to the outgoing MacBook Pro, for a $300 difference in price, you're getting more ports, SD card and HDMI, you're getting a 14 inch display with mini LED, with ProMotion, you're getting better battery life, you don't have a touch bar, you get the new design, it, it's so much better. But do keep in mind that compared to the other 14 inch MacBook Pros, this one actually has one fewer port. You'll notice that right hand side Thunderbolt port is gone, so you're only getting two. But I'm okay with that, I think that's a fair trade, and I like the M3 model. Let's move on to the M3 Pro, because it does get a little bit weird. So you'll notice here, we have, as we did before, for $19.99, you're getting the double binned M3 Pro. That's an 11 core CPU, so you're probably gonna lose a performance core there, and you're losing four GPU cores, but you are actually gaining unified memory. The M3 Pro starts with 18 gigabytes instead of 16. So provided that the performance of this chip is able to, at the very least, match the double binned M2 Pro, I think that's a net gain. However, if we scroll down and we look at the higher tier M3 Pro, this is the one with the full 18 core GPU, 12 core CPU. We, like before, have the same amount of RAM, but we get double the storage. That's what Apple used to do here with the M2 Pro, but you'll notice it was $24.99 and the new model is $23.99. So, weirdly, they've kind of hidden a price decrease in the middle of the lineup, and I think that actually makes that model a pretty decent value. But unfortunately, they do balance out that $100 price cut with a $100 price increase. See, the old M2 Max configuration used to cost $3,100, but now it's up to $3,200. Although again, you do get more unified memory, in this case, four gigabytes more than before. So that does mean if you want to gain access to the best of the best, that M3 Max that is promising 50% CPU and 20% GPU gains over a 10 month old chip, you're gonna need to spend the extra $300 and then an additional $200 to get the non-optional 48 gigabytes unified memory, which means the least expensive configuration for the 40 core GPU is $3,700. That is pretty steep. Um, so it's interesting because Apple seemingly didn't change that much about the M3 Pro, but they've kept the pricing more or less the same, arguably a little better because you get more RAM and a hundred dollar price cut on the full fat. But then it seems with the M3 Max, there's been some sizable performance gains and also some price creep to accompany it. So 
very interesting situation. Uh, and these chips are also not launching at the same time. So you're going to see videos from me here on the M3 and the M3 Pro on Tuesday. But the full fat M3 Max isn't getting here until November 15 to 17. So it's going to be a little while before we get the full picture on this new lineup. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. Of course, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be covering all of this stuff ad nauseum here on the channel. And I've just bankrupt myself. So, uh, uh, don't block the ads, I guess. Anyway, take care. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thanks for watching.